I've got more than a dozen gardens for you, all on one property. There's views, there's vistas, horticultural surprises, even wildlife. It is big, even bigger than Sylvie the pig. and Anne-Marie Van Roy have a garden and pets. That sounds pretty normal, but the size of the garden and the number of pet animals is different to most. Being in nature and having wildlife around, it's just it's, magic. It's good, yeah. Absolutely. Perfect for you. And Absolutely. what about the views? That's the other yeah, thing. Yeah, the views are fantastic, right from uh, Cape Potway all the way up to the Westgate Bridge and everything in between. Yeah. Nick and Anne-Marie have turned 22 hectares of cow paddocks at Bonio on the Mornington Peninsula into 20 spectacular themed gardens and a sanctuary for wildlife and other animals. It came together over years and years. It really wasn't meant to be this, but it, it just evolved. Well, there's animals everywhere. So you're the animal lover. How I come? am. Oh, I've always wanted to have a zoo ever since I was a little girl, and basically I've got one here now. <laughs> with all the wildlife and the dogs and the farm animals, this is pretty special. Well, you're going to show me the gardens, and yeah. you're off to feed the, the, the animals. That's right. Yeah. OK, we'll Lots see you in a bit. You will. Yes. Okay. Have fun. Hooroo. Mm -hmm. See you. See you. <laughs> so you do get some unique combinations. Yeah. was just a dam and, uh, and I thought we could make it a bit better than that and wow. turn it into something different. We brought in around 2,000 tonnes of rock. Yeah, right so around, it's all edged with rock. Yeah, right around the sides, although oh. now a lot of it's grown over. Wow. And have you got a fence? Like, yeah, we've got a fence. with cats and feral There was, things? yeah, foxes are the worst. Oh. And so eight years ago we put in a, a two kilometre, three metre high electrified fence. Fantastic. And since then, everything has become very harmonious. But you call it Palm Island. Palm Island, from, <laughs> from the palm in the middle and all the palms around. And, yeah. and they, there was an interesting story behind them. A, a friend got a helicopter and flew around Adelaide yeah. and marked them in people's houses via GPS and then drove around and knocked on their door and asked them if they wanted to get rid of them. <laughs> and about 50% of people wanted them out in a hurry <laughs> because they'd planted them years ago and they couldn't stay out of their front door. <laughs> so they well, that's came... a perfect place for it. Exactly, though, that it? one's come along beautifully. Yeah. Like you've got a real mix of plantings here. There is. Uh, one of the things I go by is gardening, break all the rules. Yes. Throw everything in you want and see what grows. Yes. And it's amazing how certain things grow in certain places when by textbook they shouldn't. I love the black swans too. They seem to like it. Beautiful. They love it. They're one of my favourite plants. That's the old willow myrtle. And I've noticed that you've got this layering effect going on. We have, and it's uh, a lot of the bigger trees, the big gums I put down the back of the dam wall, yeah. and they're now uh, obviously coming up quite nicely, but it does give you a stair-stepped approach, so you do see a lot more plants yeah. by doing it that way. Yeah. On either side of Palm Lake, Nick has put in a series of stepped garden rooms. Wonderful rocks, and they just does look like an old Roman road. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're yeah. the great earthy colour of the local stone. Yeah, beautiful. And but you've used it on the terraces up there too. Yeah, there's seven different levels of terraces, and uh, with all different types of fruit trees all the way down. Gee, and those Tuscan pines—they're beautiful. Yeah, they're fantastic. The way they frame a garden. Do you like Tuscany? Yeah, beautiful place. So yeah. I had to put something in from Tuscany. I thought as much. Yeah, yeah. but you're a rock man. I'm a rock man. I think uh, rocks are a man's diamond. <laughs> Stonework has also been used extensively in the terrace gardens on the other side of the lake. It serves to integrate a variety of influences. Well, this garden's different in that it's got a lovely contemplative sort of feel to it. Yeah, it's a beautiful garden and, and inspired 
a, a bit by uh, Moroccan, the reflection ponds they have over there in a lot of gardens. Yes. And that really continues that uh, African theme down to the centre of the rose garden where we've got a, a Moroccan styled fountain. How, what a good idea having a sunken rose garden. Yeah, well that's, uh, that's served two great benefits and one is the warmth, which you can probably feel mm. coming off the mm. rocks, but the main one is getting out of the wind. Oh, and, lovely. And uh, that gives us a growing cycle of probably five months of the year. Gee. She sets this little garden off nicely. She does. It's a great focal point in the middle of it. Mm, mm. And special person? My uh, niece, Lily. Yeah. Ah. And uh, it's Lily dancing on the, the oh, lily pond. Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's lovely. I can see two gardens down there. So what's that? The first one is the Universal Garden, and that's got a, a, a model of the universe, all the planets in it, and, uh, and it winds down, and all the stones around it represent all the stars. So a Universal Garden My there. My goodness. Uh, surrounded with yuccas, a smaller type of yucca so it doesn't grow too big. Oh, well, that's yeah. good. And then beyond is much more formal is the, the veggie patch. Oh. And we've raised them all so you can sit on the edge of the bed and, and do a bit of gardening. Do you think? So it's, yeah, it's a oh, bit, more, that's lovely. bit more relaxing. So this is the crater, Jane. The crater? The crater. Yeah. <laughs> that's a crater. <laughs> Did you do all that? Yeah. It took me a month of digging in a big excavator, but... My goodness. So you dug down how many metres? It's about nine metres. And, uh, and it's about four acres in size. And there's about 3,000 tonnes of rock in here. We got time to show me down there? Yeah, we'll okay. head on down. Good, lovely. OK. Come on. Poppy, come on. I feel like I'm in the bowels of Jurassic Park. Thankfully, there's no dinosaurs, unless Nick has another surprise in store. It started to split the crater up into different, more of the succulent area coming uh -huh. through here. But I like how you've done the yuccas. You've taken all those lower leaves Yeah, off. it makes it look like a different tree Much almost. Much better. Yeah. I like it. The old red hot pokers, they are really South African. They just speak to you, don't they? They do, and, yeah. and uh, certainly uh, South Africa or Africa in itself, Tanzania specifically led to my idea for this garden one day when I, I, I visited Gorogoro National Park. What, the crater? Yeah, the, ah. the collapsed volcano. And, uh, and I came back and I thought I wouldn't mind one of those. And so uh, I dug one, and here we are. Now, this boardwalk serving a good purpose? It is. It's, uh, it fitted well because it was very damp and boggy in here. So we put the boardwalk in. The paper barks were already here, so we built around the existing trees and then added the cliveas, which love the area for the shade. You don't often see cliveas under indigenous vegetation, I must no, say. No, it's worked out well. Yeah, that's your adventurous spirit again, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, breaking <laughs> the rules. Yeah. <laughs> now where are you taking me? Down the garden path. Oh, thank you. Given the scale of these gardens, it is amazing that Anne-Marie and Nick are able to do almost all the day-to-day -day maintenance themselves. Although wildlife, like the albino kangaroos, are happy to help keep the grass down. As for Anne-Marie's other charges, well, their talents are more in the area of care, support and giving affection. Many of them are farm rescues. They're from different farms that have been uh, in the area and um, people have just not been able to keep the animals any longer. Oh. So they've rung and said, can we take some? And we're like, absolutely. Of course you I can. I take you... everything. <laughs> 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 oh, it's fantastic. Look at this one, looking at it. <laughs> That's Lola. Lola. You coming down, Lola? Oh. Sylvia, you wanting a feed? <laughs> now, what sort of sow is she? She's a silver, I believe. She came from a place down in Red Hill, the farm where they were actually moving to Perth. That's only water she's drinking now. She's off the milk, but uh, she likes she, to have likes something to, to suck she's on She's thirsty, still. yeah. <laughs> it is quite a lifestyle that you've got here. If you had a chance, would you change it? Absolutely not. Not one iota. No, I think it's, it's pretty perfect. It is hard work, but uh, when you love the work, it does. it's not work anymore. And I think that's where it... It helps us. But look at the love I get. 